Here we have two controls. So in order for a person to log into a system, all the person needs to do is supply a username and a password. It is becoming very common to add CAPTCHA codes. CAPTCHA codes are a system created mainly to handle mechanized attacks. Attacks in which the hacker uses a program to try to penetrate, to break into a form. CAPTCHA codes, although they've taken up now a life of their own, are meant to be visible things that humans can interpret whilst machines cannot. If you're developing any form which you think might be hacked, that system is very helpful. There are other mechanisms you might want to include into your programs. I'll, I'll discuss these very shortly. Here, if we look at the screen, uh, we're talking about the code behind the submit button. What the button will do will check that the username and password text boxes are not blank. And if they are, the form will not be processed further. If the username is blank, display that error and set the boolean to false. I've copied the text and will repeat that for the password. As I was saying a short while ago, besides CAPTCHA code, you might have other mechanisms, such as tar pits. A tar pit is a mechanism in which if the user is deemed to be making a lot of queries, the program slows down. Another mechanism is a lockout period. If you give from the same computer combination more than five times, you cannot log in for a period of 15 minutes. This goes a long way to preventing a hacker from hammering the term used is called brute force attack uh, a form. There should be, in, in more secure forms, a mechanism in which if the number of attacks from a particular computer or a particular location is very high, abnormally high, the administrator is alerted. So they will receive a message, look, we are getting a lot of invalid attempts from this place. Check it out. In very secure systems, what happens is that besides the fields we have here, um, you're given a, a hardware device. You press the button and the code comes up. Certain banks use this mechanism to ensure that without this device you cannot log into the phone. Now with many of these devices, um, the code is personalized to that account. So I cannot, for argument, say give my device to someone else with a similar account because the number generated is unique to me. These are all mechanisms to make it difficult to hack into a phone. Now, what I've just done a uh, short while ago, I've included those libraries I need to use. One of the libraries I'm using is one that allows me to read the web.config file into which I have entered the SQL database string. We recall this was created automatically when I made use of the database. 
here what I am doing is basically I'm preparing to pass my first SQL statement. Copying the string name. Next line is my SQL statement. This will be the command that the hacker will inject his own instructions into. If you notice, search string is just a text statement that will be passed to the data. Now the trick behind the SQL injection is that the hacker adds his own instructions and he does this exactly at the point here. What I'm doing, I'm saying where login name equals username textbox. And I'm using concatenation to achieve that. So if the hacker writes something else into the username text box, this will be fed to the database. Now, an instruction in the database must stand with a semicolon. So if the hacker sends a statement, ends it with a semicolon, and then continues with his own statement, he has managed to perform this type of action, an SQL injection. Never use this type of code into your own solution. I was talking about security and uh, what I don't have in this form, for example, and this is a shortcoming, is a check for minimum password link. I have a check at the database in, and I don't have a check here. I mentioned this in, in my other footage, you should always repeat checks. A few extra cycles necessary to do the extra check far outweigh the benefits or the loss, rather, um, you could get from being hacked. Like if a program developing a solution forgets to put a check somewhere, you always have another check and another check. That is the advice I, I normally give.